history of crime detection has produced no more famous name than that of Sexton Blake. We present William Franklin as Sexton Blake, with David Gregory as his assistant tinker, and Heather Chasen as his secretary, Paula Dane, in a series of case histories by Donald Stewart. Today's episode is called Bluebeard's Key. I thoroughly enjoyed the weekend, Colonel Armitage. I can't say I'm looking forward to going back to London. Same here. The Nightingale doesn't sing in Berkeley Square anymore. Mm -hmm. Country looks at its best this time of the year, eh? Of course, you've had exceptionally good weather. I suppose you must go. No, I'm afraid so. There's nothing very important at the moment, Governor. We can't leave Paula to cope all on her own for too long. Never know what's going to crop up. Well, you needn't go until after lunch anyway. That gives you all the morning. Has just come, Daddy. Here you are. And there's a parcel for Mr. Blake. For me? Only a small one. Ah. This was posted here in the village. Well, you don't know anyone here except Colonel Armitage. And me. Well, that was supposed to include you, Mel. Ah. Oh, I better see what it is. Ah, oh, excuse me. You must have got an unexpected fan, Mr. Blake. I don't know who it can be. Well. What do you make of that? A key? How extraordinary. Why should anyone send you a key? not a new key. Wait a minute, here's a message. Does it say you sent it? It simply says, this is Bluebeard's first key. Well, when was it posted, Governor? Yesterday. It's small enough to go in any post box. Oh, if somebody knew you were staying with Colonel Armitage and thought they'd do a bit of leg pulling. Let me look at that key. I thought so. This is the key to that woman's cottage. Well, how on earth do you know that? Do you see that file cut across the handle? See it? Well? Don't you remember, Daddy? about five years ago. The cottage was empty then. Tommy Pritchett pinched the key and we went exploring. It was Tommy who filed that cut. There was an awful row about oh, it. Oh, yes, I remember now. Who is that woman? Oh, Mrs. Seymour. Oh, dreadful creature. The Stantons should have had more sense than to let the place to a woman like that. What's wrong with her? Oh, drinks like a fish, always giving parties, long-haired men and queer-looking women. Oh, hell of a row they kick up. Goes on all night sometimes. She really is the creep of creeps. <laughs> she must have taken a fancy to you, Governor, to send you the key of the door. Mm, it's odd, isn't it? Where is this cottage? At the end of Cherry Lane. Oh, you're not thinking of going there, are I'd you? I'd just like to have a look round. How far is it? Not very far, if we take the shortcut across the field. Now, let's go then, shall we? Is this just curiosity, Governor, or have you got something else in mind? I don't altogether like the implication contained in that word bluebeard, Tinker. It suggests some quite unpleasant possibilities. Well, here we are. That's the cottage. Ah. ah it's charming. Well, it's a nice little place. A bit isolated. It doesn't seem to be anybody out. Windows all closed, curtains still drawn. I shouldn't think Mrs. Seymour ever gets up before midday. <laughs> Sleeping it off, probably. Well, now you've seen the place, Blake, we may as well go back. Just a minute. Here, what are you going to do? I'm curious to see this Mrs. Seymour. Yes, but you can't. Carly. You ought to know the governor by now, Colonel. Well, you'll only get a stream of abuse. Can you hear anything? No. Yes, I can. Sounds like a radio. That's what I thought. What are we going to say when she comes? Well, lucky we get a chance to say anything. That woman will blast our pants off. Do you think she's a wife? She'd hardly go away and leave the radio on. Can't go on sleeping through that, surely. I shouldn't think so. Well, she's not going to answer. Blake, you mustn't use that key. Why not? Supposing she is in bed and asleep. Then we'll apologize. The radio's coming from that room, over there. I've forgotten to turn it off before she went to bed. If she did go to bed. Oh, let's get out of here before there's trouble. Stay in the hall, Mel. What's the matter, Governor? Come here, Armitage. What is it? Is that Mrs. Seymour? Here. Yes, that's her. Oh, what's the matter with her? Is she tight? She's dead. Good God. She's been stabbed. Think her go and get hold of a doctor and the police. Bluebeard seems to have lived up to his mythical reputation. <laughs> mind, Mr. Blake, that this is going to be uh, a difficult business. I agree with you, Inspector MacDonald. We've been through the place with a fine tooth comb. There's nothing to tell us even a wee bit about her background. Not a letter, nor a scrap of anything. 
If you'd pick up the living here for eight months, there'd be something, wouldn't you? You would indeed, Inspector. Also, from what I can gather, she wasn't the type of woman to live in the country from choice. Ah, you're right. She called herself Mrs. Sylvia Seymour. But there's no evidence that that was her real name. Well, we shall publish a police photograph of the dead woman asking for information. Maybe somebody will recognize it. Can I come in, MacDonald? Oh, aye, if you wish to rob it. Uh, we'll be leaving just now. I just heard about this terrible affair passing and saw your car outside. Uh, uh, this is Mr. Sexton Blake, uh, Sir Robert Stanton. Uh, he left the cottage to Mrs. Seymour. Good morning, Mr. Blake. Uh, heard you were staying with Armitage. Shocking business, did he? Any idea who was responsible? Oh, there's hardly been time, Sir Robert. Well, you'll probably find it was one of those weird people she used to have down here, Pauling Lot. This cottage is your property, then? Yes. I was wondering whether Mrs. Seymour supplied any particulars about herself, previous address, references. Oh, can't say. I, I leave all that to my agent. Mm, I'll have a word with him. Uh, when was this woman killed? Uh, last night? Dr. Payne says she'd been dead for approximately 36 hours. That puts the time of murder at somewhere between 10 o'clock and midnight on Saturday. Saturday? You sound upset, Sir Robert. Upset? Oh, why should I be upset? I thought of her lying here all that time, I suppose. Well, I must be off. Let me know if, um, if there are any developments. Oh, I've no doubt you'll hear, sir. Um, I'm glad to see that Mr. Richard's back home, though I didn't think he was looking too well. Nonsense! My brother's in the best of health. Nothing wrong with him at all. Bye-bye, Mr. Blake. Quite perturbed over this business, isn't he? Aye. Mm. The woman was one of his tenants. You think that was the reason? Tell me, where has Mr. Richard Stanton been? Uh, abroad, I believe. Been away quite a while. Um, is there anything more you'd like to do here? No, thanks, Inspector. We'll be getting back to Colonel Armitage. Uh, if you'll wait a wee while until my sergeant comes back, I'll give you a lift. No, it's very kind of you, but we'll walk. It's not far. You're not barely turning to London this afternoon, I take it, Mr. No, Blake. in the circumstances, I don't think so. I... I'm very worried. Well, why, Governor? That message that came with the key is an obvious implication. I don't quite understand... If I sent you a box of cigars, Inspector, with a note stating this is the first box of cigars, what would you infer? Well, you were going to send another. <sighs> well, I should have seen that. Bluebeard's first key. That's why I'm worried. I'm afraid that there may well be another, possibly more than one. You don't often get a chance of having tea in the garden these days. Uh, you should have brought Betty with you, Ronnie. We see so little of her lately. She's a bit off colour today. I didn't want to leave her, but she insisted that I should come along and pick up all the latest gen. Is he going out so little she likes to know what's going on around the village? Oh, what's the matter with your wife, Mr. Wilmot? Mm, sort of general debility. Perky enough sometimes, but she has bad headaches, kind of migraines. Typical age, you know. More tea, anybody? Oh, please. Did you ever come in contact with Mrs. Seymour, Mr. Wilmot? <laughs> Me? Good Lord, no. I saw her once across the street... Even distance didn't lend enchantment, old boy. <laughs> she was probably quite attractive once. How old was she? Oh, at a rough guess, I should think, between 40 and 45. <laughs> oh, thanks, Laura. Pass, Mr. Blake, the sugar, Ronnie. Oh, thanks. I say, did you know that Richard Stanton's back? Yes. I saw him the other day when I was out shopping. You know, there is something the matter with him. I met him in the wood near our house. He looked terrible. Such a strange look about the eyes. Mm, touch of the Stanton melody, probably. Oh, what's that, Colonel? Bats in the belfry, old boy. Runs in the family, actually. Great-grandfather Stanton died as batty as a coo. Is that true? Oh, quite true. It's a taint in the blood. You'll find it sometimes in these very old families. The Stantons go back a long way in history. Oh, some of them are history. Won't be any left soon. There's only Sir Robert, Lady Stanton, and Richard. Oh, I must be getting back to Betty. It's a pity I can't take her back any news... Still, thanks for the tea. Uh, tell Bessie I'll pop along and see her soon. Mm, she'll like that. Bye, all. Bye. Well, Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Uh, bit of an ass, but a likable ass. He seems quite a nice chap. His wife adores him. He worships her, of course. She's years older than he is, but it seems to have worked out. Hello. Here's Inspector MacDonald coming across the lawn. Come and sit down, Inspector. You look hot. All right. Yes, I am a wee bit. Would you like some tea? Oh, I'll not trouble you, Miss Armitage. <clears throat> I've had no luck with Sir Robert's agent, Mr. Blake. The dead woman paid a year's rent in advance in view of references. Said she'd just come from abroad and knew nobody in England. She seems to have taken care to cover her tracks. The most important thing, in my opinion, Mr. Blake, is why that type of woman should come to live in a place like this. Mm, I couldn't agree with you more. You mind that she intended to stay? Well, she wouldn't have paid for so long in advance. Hmm. 
Now, was she hiding from someone, or did she come to find somebody? Who would a woman like that expect to find in a small community like this? Oh, it's much more likely she was hiding from somewhere. I think you're wrong, Armitage. It strikes me as much more probable that she came here because there was someone she knew who was already living here. Blackmail, perhaps. It seems not unlikely, Inspector. Oh, I suppose it is possible, Blake. I can't imagine anyone around here. And what about the Stanton? Oh, you can't be serious. Oh, why not? They're rich. The Roberts seemed unduly interested when we saw him this morning. Not quite in character, I thought. And he's in a highly nervous condition. Aye. Yes, it struck me at the time that he appeared a wee bit worried. I can't see Sir Robert Stanton sticking a knife into anybody. Unlikely people are capable of the most unlikely actions, given sufficient incentive. But why send that key? I mind what you said this morning, Mr. Blake, about the key. We're doing too much guessing, Inspector. We need more facts to work on. <sighs> the dead woman called herself Mrs. Seymour. If it was her real name, I doubt it, but it might be. My assistant Tinker may have something to tell us when he gets back from London. Have you making inquiries at Somerset House, you mean? Yes, he'll probably draw a blank, but it's worth trying. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Seymour suggests a husband. If she did have a husband, I'd like to know where he is now. I believe it's just an excuse to spend a few more days in the country. You'd better tell the governor that, Paula. A fat lot of good it'd do if I did. Well, you are on a bad temper, aren't you? No. I'm just fed up. This is the first decent weather we've had for ages, and I'm cooped up here trying to cope with a lot of damn routine stuff while you and Mr. Blake enjoy yourselves in the country. Well, I wouldn't say that. You don't have to. I've just said it. Listen, Paula, I haven't got much time. I've got to get back. Well, why bother to come at all? The governor wants some inquiries made. Well, get busy and make them. All right, and I'll tell him you're not interested. Oh, don't you dare. Well, what is it he wants? Here's a police photograph of a dead woman. There are a lot of long-haired weirdies at her parties. Get some copies of the photo made and get Nichols and Didcot to try to Chelsea pubs and clubs. And see if anyone knows her. What's her name? Mrs. Seymour? Mrs. Sylvia Seymour. But it may not be her real name. All right, I'll attend to it. Tell you what, Paula. If you get hold of anything, why not come down and report personally? I might do that. Bikini and all. Blake, here's another little packet. Oh, I expected it, but not so soon. Do you mean uh, another key? Mm, I'm afraid so. It must have been posted yesterday to got here the first post this morning. It was, 4.30 collection. That's our last collection. It's a Yale key, a nearly new one. This is Bluebeard's second key. Is that what the message says, Gov? Yes. Well, it can't mean uh, another murder. I think it does. Who? There's no means of identifying this key, is there? I mean, you were able to tell us about the other mill because of that cut. Oh, no. There must be dozens of Yale keys. Exactly. So how are we going to find out which lock this fits? I'll go. Oh, this is terrible, Blake. This is Merle Armitage. Yes. Hold on, will you? Mr. Blake, it's Inspector MacDonald. Oh, thank you. Hello, Inspector. Where? I see... Yes. Miss Cheeseman. I'll be there as quickly as I can. Miss Cheeseman? Yes, do you know her? She's the new district nurse. She only came a fortnight ago. She's been stabbed. Oh. In her bed. Come along, Tinker. We've got to step on it. She was killed around 11 o'clock last night. And the doctor can't be certain within an hour or two. Then the murderer posted the key before the murder. Aye. I mind you were right about that key, Mr. Blake. Never make any sense of it. Bluebeard must have had the key in his possession in the afternoon. The last collection is at 4.30. Spare key. Her own still in her handbag. Mm, poor woman. She'd not been here over a fortnight. Where did she come from? Egglesfield. Before that, she was in London, in a WVS during the war. I got all that from Dr. Payne. He made the discovery. She failed to turn up for a confinement early this morning, and he came to see why. Quite a different type of woman from the other, Inspector. Aye. Your assistant had no luck in London, I gather, Mr. Blake. No, it was a very faint hope. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter. I'm thinking that we may have a lunatic to deal with. Hmm, could be. Unless we can discover a logical reason. Can you suggest one? No, for the moment, I'm afraid I can't. Are you going to see Miss Cheeseman's sister, Inspector? She's very upset. It's not surprising. Mrs. Hunter came down from London this morning to stay with her sister for a few days, didn't she? It... 
Well, it must have been a nasty shock. I uh, thought it would be better to leave her on her own for a wee while to get over it. Let's go down and see her, shall we? She's in the kitchen. I've made her some tea. I was thoughtful of you, Tinker. Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Mrs. Hunter. Oh, that's all right. I'm still a bit dazed from the shock. It doesn't seem possible that such a thing could have happened to Glad. She was always so bright and jolly. I only had a letter from her last week. It was full of her new job and how she was settling in. She, she'd seen somebody she thought she knew, too. Here and... in the village? Yes. I haven't got a letter here, but it was the woman in the bomb flats during the war. Please tell us about it, Mrs. Hunter. It was one of those doodle bugs. Fell on some flats in Kensington. Glad was in the WVS, you see. Yes, we knew that. Please go on. Well, this woman and her husband were in one of the damaged flats. Glad helped to pull them out. Oh, they were a bit scratched and bruised, but they weren't much hurt. Your sister thought she saw this woman here in the village? Yes. She said she was sure it was the same woman. The war's been over quite a while, Mrs. Hunter. Your sister could have been mistaken. Oh, Glad never made mistakes like that. She had a wonderful memory for faces. She often talked about that woman and her husband. It, it stuck in her mind. Did your sister mention the name of this woman? I don't think she knew it. Oh, she did. She'd forgotten. It was faces that was Glad's strong point. Well, what will you be doing now? Will you be returning to your own home? I thought of staying here until after the funeral, and unless there's any... Uh... Oh, we'd have no objection. Uh, can I have a word with you, Mr. Blake? Yes, of course. Will you be all right, Mrs. Hunter? Oh, yes, I'll be all right. Thank you. I'll be a constable on duty if there's anything you might be wanting. Uh, come along, Mr. Blake. If Mrs. Seymour was the woman in the bombed flats incident... Uh... She'd be the right age. Mm. Even after all this time, it should be possible to get hold of a list of the people who were living in those flats then. Well, you don't know which flats, do you, Governor? Well, that shouldn't be difficult. It was a doodle bug that fell on them. Would you like me to get in touch with Chief Inspector Coots at Scotland Yard, Inspector? He'd have inquiries made. Oh, I, I'd be much obliged. It'll be quicker than going through the usual official channels. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, I have a mind to call on Sir Robert Stanton. Maybe you'd like to come too. I would. I should like to know a bit more about his brother, Richard. It's terrible, really terrible. I can't tell you how shocked I am. She was stabbed, you say, uh, like the other woman? Aye. The same knife was used by the appearance of the wound. I can't understand it. Why should anyone want to kill this poor woman? Or the other, Sir Robert. Why have you come to me, Inspector? I'm... I'm interested, naturally. But uh, I should like, if possible, to have a word with uh, your brother, Sir Robert. My brother? I can assure you that he can't help Maybe me. Maybe not, sir, but I'd like to see him all the same. I'm afraid you can't. Why not, Sir Robert? I don't see any point in disturbing him. I understand that he's only recently returned from abroad. That's correct. Why these questions? Because I think that you're concealing something, Sir Robert. That is an outrageous accusation. I know you have a very high reputation, Mr. Blake, but that doesn't work. I apologize for speaking plainly, but we're dealing with murder, Sir Robert. Where was your brother while he was away? I cannot see that it is any business of yours. It would save a great deal of trouble and unpleasantness if you'd tell us the truth, Sir Robert. I have nothing more to say. It won't be difficult, you know, to find out the name of the clinic. Clinic? I don't know what you... Your brother has been in a clinic for the mentally ill. Isn't that what you're trying to hide? I refuse to be in... Oh, what's the use? Yes, you're quite right. Richard has been in a clinic for treatment. He he developed signs some years ago, blackouts, fits of rage. I'm very sorry, Sir Robert. Now, why did he come back home? Well, they said he was completely cured, normal. I uh, yet should have told us before. Yes, I was afraid. I I didn't know what to do. I shall have to see your brother, Sir Robert. You, you can't. I, I, I don't know where he is. You mean he's out somewhere? He, he went out last night. I... I haven't seen him since. Well, Governor, the postmistress has agreed to play ball. What do we do now? Nothing much we can do until we hear from Coots or Paula. May as well walk back to the Armitages and relax. What do you think's happened to Richard Stanton? I'm a bit worried about him, Tinker. McDonald's men are searching the district. I sincerely hope they find him. Hi there. Oh, it's it's Wilma. I I caught caught sight of you way back down the street. I say, rumours are humming about like swarms of demented bees. What's all this about Richard Stanton? And what about him? Well, they say he's done in the district nurse and vermouth, skedaddled, bunked. I got your meaning the first time. I shouldn't believe everything you hear, Mister Wilmot. Oh, uh, it it isn't true then. 
I was hoping I'd have a nice juicy titbit to amuse Betty with during dinner. And try a funny story instead. No, I'm afraid they don't go down too well with Betty. She hasn't got that kind of humor. Perhaps you've yet to find the right story. And the trouble is, I can't remember him, old boy. Always make a mess of the payoff. <laughs> so, no new developments, eh? I'm afraid not. Oh, well, I'd, uh, I'd better toddle along home. Go to have an early night. Got to dither up to London tomorrow, take up some documents for Betty to her solicitor. Oh, I hate London, particularly in this weather. Oh, well, cheerio. Goodbye, Wilmot. You were a bit short with him, Governor. He gets on your nerves just a little. Now, let's cut through here. He'll take us up to that gate at the end of the lawn. You don't think we'd just stand and kill these women, do you? I'm not entirely convinced. Well, because of the keys? Partly, yes. Mainly because you can't have a logical action and an illogical one at the same time. Now, here we are. I wish you'd explain what you mean. The keys were sent to me, Tinker. I... That's Paula over there. What's brought her down here? Good evening, Mr. Blake. Well, when did you arrive? About ten minutes ago. I've got some important information. I thought I'd better come and tell you. Oh, the telephone suddenly gone out of fashion? Uh-huh. Go on. Well, Nichols was lucky with that photograph. He found a weirdy in a pub in Chelsea who recognized it. As whom? Sylvia Seymour. Under the influence of several vodkas, on the expense account, by the way, Horace Plush more or less sobbed out his story. Was that really his name? Well, I suppose so. Nobody admit to a name like that unless they had to. Anyway, he'd been down to one of these parties. There was tons of drink about, and he asked Mrs. Seymour where she got all her money from. She'd had a few and was on the way to getting thoroughly sloshed, so she laughed, pulled back the carpet, and waved a folded paper at them. That's worth a lot of money to me, she said. It's going to be worth even more one of these days. You're sure she said that? Well, so Nichols says. I've got his written report in my handbag. Had this man, Plush, any idea what the paper was? Only that it looked like a certificate of some kind. I see. Uh, there was no message from Inspector Coote before you left. No, there'd hardly be time. I left the telephone number here. He'll contact you direct. The Colonel Armitage has asked me to stay until tomorrow. Oh, I suppose since you're here, you may as well. Well, how could I refuse such a pressing invitation? Did you bring a bikini with you, Paula? Oh, she won't need one. The weather's not going to last. In my opinion, it's working up for a storm. It would. There's no sign of him at all, Mr. Blake. My men searched all day yesterday and again today. They're still searching. Hey, Richard Stanton's either left the district or he's hiding up somewhere. It's nearly three o'clock now. He's been missing since nine. The night before last. It's very worrying. I sincerely hope you'll find him. I'm thinking maybe that Sir Robert might know more than he's told us. I doubt it, Inspector. Oh, I have some news for you. Chief Inspector Coots came through on the phone not long before you arrived. Why? Oh, We've got all the dope on the Seymour woman. Oh, you have? Oh, that's fine. Her real name was Dorothy Hemming. She was married to a man in the pay call. They'd been married about 18 months when the doodlebug fell. The husband's name was James Hemming. The man Coots put on to make the inquiry found a small tobacco in this shop where the Hemmings used to buy cigarettes. It was only regular customers who could get any then. Yes. The owner of the shop's still there. He recognized the woman's photograph. And uh, what happened to the husband? You've not been able to get any information about him. He's our Bluebeard inspector. Ah. Hey, what about Richard Stanton? He fits into it perfectly. I'm not suggesting that he's Hemming. Richard Stanton was responsible for Bluebeard. And you think the scheme actually started with the arrival of Miss Cheeseman as the new district nurse. Bluebeard had to move fast. She might recognize him at any moment as the husband of the woman in the doodlebug incident. Dorothy Hemming, otherwise Mrs. Seymour. That's right. Mm. Bluebeard decided to kill two birds with one stone. His wife first. But what was the motive? Why should it matter if Miss Cheeseman recognized him as Hemming? If you trouble to think for a moment, Inspector, you can answer that question for yourself. You mean that Hemming was not his real name? That his wife had discovered who he really was? His wife had certainly discovered who he was, but... Mr. Blake, they've just sent this up from the post office. It's another little packet. Bluebeard. But there's no delivery in the afternoon. I arranged with the postmistress yesterday that if there was a packet addressed to me in the collection, to send it up at once. Ah, uh, here we are. Look at this. This is Bluebeard's third key. Are you saying that this means another murder? That's what he's contemplating. But we're ahead of him this time. He wasn't expecting me to get this until tomorrow morning. What key is it? Do you know? That's going to be the difficulty. Aye, and a big one. We can't go trying every lot until we find the right one. It'd give away to the murderer the fact that we'd already got the key. Well, certainly it would. The time element is against us. If this key was intended to reach me by the first post in the morning, the murder must be planned for some time tonight. What can you do? You must do something. Hmm. 
This is not a yeah, this is an old key. I'm thinking it's like looking for a needle on a haystack. Not quite so bad as that. I have an idea where this key could belong. Merle, would you go and send Paula to me? Yes. MacDonald, I want to work this out. Will you meet me here at 10 o'clock tonight? Aye, I'll do that. But you have a great responsibility. Will you not tell me who you think this key belongs to? Not now. When I do tell you, it'll be a certainty. Well, if you don't tell me, I've got to take a chance on your being right. But um, I'm not too happy about it. Neither am I, Inspector. But I've got to make sure... I don't be wrong. There are no lights in the house. There shouldn't be. I'd be very uneasy if there were. You're quite certain. Quite. I think you should be here somewhere. Is that you, Governor? Yes. All quiet. We may have a long wait. There's no telling when he'll come. As soon as he enters the house, we follow. Yes, we've got the key. He's coming now. Listen. Get ready. Once he's in the house, we must get him any time. Mr. Wilmot. Now we'll go and find Richard Stanton. Mr. Wilmot slept through it all. He left the tablets by the bedside for her, including an extra strong one. But why did he want to kill her, Blake? They always seemed so happy. I think he was fed up, Colonel. She was a semi-invalid and very much older than he was. And she left him all her money. You see now why his wife, his real wife, has such a hold over him. He committed bigamy when he married Betty. He only did two years ago. He'd only been here three months before they were married. Well, he had charm, you know. All the women liked him. What was the idea of kidnapping Richard Stanton and keeping him hidden in the shed in the house, Governor? If Richard Stanton had been found in a semi-conscious condition at the foot of the stairs and Betty Wilmot stabbed in her bed, what would have been the general opinion? Even if Stanton had accused Wilmot of keeping him prisoner, nobody would have believed him. But why the keys? To make people think it was the work of a lunatic. It tied up with Stanton. Sending him to me was an afterthought when he heard I was here. Wilmot was an opportunist. I suppose he deserted his real wife. Oh, a long time ago, I should imagine. But she found him and made him pay. With Betty's money. He never had any of his own. Betty was a very rich woman, you know. How were you so certain that the key belonged to the Wilmot's house? That was me. I sneaked up and tried it in the lock. Paula took the opportunity when Wilmot had gone up to London. He told us he was going. But he only went as far as Egglesfield. He altered his appearance with a wig and a moustache and came back. I was wondering how he managed to post that key without being recognized. Uh, he kept well away from his house, probably stayed in the woods. He ditched his disguise when we caught him. I came in to tell you I'm off to catch the train back to London. Now, why don't you all stay for a day or two longer? The weather's fine after the storm. The all good. Well, that's not a bad idea. But I didn't think Paula's bought a suitcase. I didn't. But I have a toothbrush and a bikini in my handbag. And in weather like this, what more does a girl need? <laughs> That story in our Sexton Blake series was called Bluebeard's Keys and was written by Donald Stewart. William Franklin played Sexton Blake, David Gregory, Tinker, and Heather Chasen, Paula. Colonel Armitage was played by Lockwood West. Merle Armitage was Beth Boyd. Inspector MacDonald, Geoffrey Matthews. Sir Robert Stanton, Rolf Lefevre. Ronald Wilmot, Ian Thompson. And Emily Hunter was played by Anna Burton. The series was devised for radio by Philip Ridgway and produced by Alistair Scott Johnston. Thank you.